MTW. Well, over the next three weeks, the hopes and dreams of hundreds of players and hundreds of communities will be played out before us in the high school basketball tournament. Thanks for joining us for our Hoops 8 tournament special. Who will take home gold balls? Who will be the heroes this year? Will there be any legendary performances to come out of the championship games? Oh, some great performances in the past. Who could forget Ralph Mims in 04? Taking Brunswick to the title game, put up 46 in an overtime loss to Portland. Cindy Blodgett scored 40 for Lawrence in a win over Westbrook in the 93 title game. In 92, John Wassenberg of South Portland, 43 in an epic five overtime victory for the Red Riots. Martha Verano in 13 scored 34, including her team's last 16, 19th in the fourth as Wayne Fleet won the goal ball. Just three years ago, Washburn's Kenzie Worcester recorded a Class D record 37 to beat Rangeley. And Andy Bedard for Mountain Valley in 1994, a title game state record, 52 points in a win over Camden Hills. Our reminder, Maine's best and longest running high school hoops tournament show and basketball highlight show Hoops 8 has you covered throughout the tournament. Catch us at 11 o'clock every night of the tournament. And when it comes to successful basketball programs, the ingredients seem to be a feeder system, supportive community, good coaches, and tradition. But if you're starting at ground zero, the rebuild can be painful. This season, several programs have had turnaround or groundbreaking seasons, starting in A South with the Bitterford and Kenny Bunk boys. Bitterford head basketball coach Justin Tardiff likes the joke that in his first three seasons, the Tigers won more sportsmanship banners than basketball games. When I took the job, I knew we were going to struggle for the first couple of years, um, but I knew there was also some talent coming up, um, and it was just being able to stay positive and just keep kids working hard. How tough were those years? Tardiff's first three seasons, they went 0-18, 1-17, and 1-17. and Last year, Bitterford won eight games, and this year, they've become the fourth team in school history to win at least 14 games in a season. We're really hoping to make like this year kind of a statement and just kind of prove to other teams that Bitterford basketball isn't really downhill anymore. Bitterford can claim one basketball title. That was in 1924. Kenny Bunk has never won a boys' basketball title. This season, the Rams reached double-digit wins for the first time in 11 years. Because of how much our youth program has developed kids and allowed them to play together, even though we're young in age, these kids have been playing together for years. After an 0-2 start, Kenny Bunk won 10 straight. The crowds got bigger, the community felt the excitement, and the team began feeling like a contender. I honestly, personally, wasn't expecting a 10-game winning streak. I don't think anybody was, but it was very, very exciting. I think that's the first time, like, ever in Kenny Bunk history. All right, Bitterford with its most regular season win since 66. Some other resurgent programs, Haldale, best record since 05. The Marshwood girls at 17 and 1. And Freeport's first 14 win season since 91. Now both Bitterford and Kennebunk could make a big run in the A-Boys tournament, but the favorite is the defending champion. There's been no drop off for Greeley after losing three all-conference players to graduation. Zach Brown has elevated his game. The Rangers have it all. Tough D, transition and half-court offense, outside shooting and size. Bitterford brings toughness to the tournament and could put five three-point shooters on the floor. Westbrook can rely on all Hoops 8 guard Zach Manusian, who's played more of a playmaker role down the stretch, with Jeremiah Alado and Deng Jani adding to the scoring. York started the season 7-0 but cooled off down the stretch, but nobody played Greeley closer. Falmouth will control the pace, the development of big man Nick Hester and solid guard play gives the Yachtsman a chance. All right, let's talk Class A boys with our one-man panel, Michael Hoffer. Forgot about Hamden, 17-1 up north, but the question really is, Greeley or the field, it looks like, Michael? Yeah, I think you got to feel like it's the Greeley Invitational, right? They've won 40 in a row now. It's a program record, and despite graduating so much from last year's team, they look like the team to beat. But Biddeford, they're having that fabulous season. You can't overlook them. Uh, Westbrook's certainly dangerous. Falmouth's accomplished a lot despite of their injuries. And then I think even Brunswick in the seventh spot might be a, a, a team that could sneak up on somebody and maybe spring an upset here over the next few days. And Greeley, what makes them so tough, Mike? They do a little bit of everything. They're strong inside and out, and Zach Brown's leadership and his play really can't be overstated how special he's been this season. Absolutely. All right. Well, when it comes to the A-Girls tournament right now, Michael, as we shift gears, three teams have really separated themselves from the pack. Brunswick's the top seed after a perfect regular season. The Dragons have tournament experience as state runners-up, and a big three in Marley Grote, Charlotte McMillan, and Sabrina Armstrong. 
who all averaged at least 12 a game. Really is tournament tested after playing one of the toughest schedules in the state. Anna DeWolf has been close to unstoppable leading her conference in scoring, and Brooke Obar and Camille Clement have been sharing the scoring. Marshwood isn't afraid to go 10 deep, and Miranda Montgomery averages almost a double-double inside. And the Hawks led the SMAA in scoring defense. All right, Michael rejoins me. Looks like a top-heavy bracket here. Absolutely, and I think it's going to be a fun tournament to watch. And no one's really even talking about Marshwood up here. They've had a fantastic season. Uh, Brunswick going undefeated. They had that epic win on the buzzer beater against Greeley back in late December. We'd love to see them, those two teams match up again. And, you know, this is kind of a gravy year for Greeley because their three-star players, Anna DeWolf, Brooke Obar, and Camille Clement, none of them are seniors yet. So if Greeley can win this year, uh, they'd, they'd be even better going into next year. And if they don't, like I said, they'll have a great opportunity next year. Don't overlook Brunswick. They came very close last year to winning the whole thing. All right, Michael, we'll be back with you in a second. Another player to look out for in that tournament, Emily Archibald of Kenny Bunk, just had a triple-double the other day. But speaking of Greeley-Brunswick, let's check out our top endings of the regular season. Brunswick and Greeley matching up, down one final seconds. Marley Grove for the win for Brunswick at the Horn. Bitterford and Marshwood, boys, in five overtimes. Jerome Criado with three free throws with five seconds, le with seconds left to force it to a fifth OT where they would eventually win. Portland's Shayla Eubanks drills the three for Portland with three seconds left to beat Gorham and end their 47-game win streak. Holldale trailing Richmond with four seconds left, but Alec Byron goes coast to coast for the win at the Horn. And trailing South Portland by 18 in the third quarter, EL rallies for an OT win. Those are our best endings. We'll be back with more tournament preview show next.